So today I'm basically going to talk about skylines and we, so in the past, uh, we, um, we did skyline, um, we did a video on replacing a skyline with another skyline. So that, that used layers uh, extensively and a lot of masking functionality. And you can watch that workshop on our YouTube page. But that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about editing pre-existing skylines and um, looking at ways to manipulate what you already have uh, and get the most out of uh, your skies. And we're going to cover a variety of different topics, or rather a, a kind of a variety of different skies that you may have. Um, and so in our video, I'm going to focus on, or rather in our workshop today, I'm going to focus on uh, a couple different tools. The main thing is we're going to be um, using a couple different methods of selecting the actual sky itself. And then one of the major takeaways for this video is we're going to be using exposure, clarity, and also contrast significantly to really make the skies pop, to get a lot more value out of your clouds. And so you can see a lot more, um, they just have a more robust feel to them. And we have a couple different circumstances that I'm going to talk about today, where in this case, we are lacking a lot of contrast and actually vibrance in this image. So we'll look at this image. In our other image, we're, we have a very like um, sort of uniform sky that's going on in here. And we can improve this with uh, gradients. Um, and then we can look at another different another method within this sky, which is to use a subtraction method that I think is going to be really make the sky pop and is really interesting. And then we're going to sort of uh, showcase how to combine these methods with this guy here and also talk about making uh, accurate selections in this image here, because oftentimes with skies. Uh, you, especially if you're making uh, larger exposure adjustments or contrast adjustments to your image, you don't want that to interact with things like buildings or your subject matter. Uh, you just want it to apply to the actual sky itself. And so we're going to have a look at that today as well. Um, yeah. So the very first thing I'd like to talk about is luminosity selection. And I love this tool. This is such a useful tool that doesn't get talked about enough. I'm going to take my image here and I'm going to bring it into edit mode because luminosity selection is a edit mode tool. Okay. And so what luminosity selection does, it is essentially, it's an automated process. It's a simple one click process. And what it does is it searches for all elements of your image that are uh, higher in luminance, uh, higher in brightness, and it makes an active selection of them, an automated selection. So in ACDC, there's a lot of ways to make selections. Uh, you can use the actual selection tools themselves, like the brush selection tool or the polygonal selection tool or the magic wand selection tool. And all of these are really good and useful tools, um, but they're not automated. Uh, they're manual methods or they're a mixture of manual and automated methods. Whereas luminosity selection is strictly an automated method. It's going to look at your image and decide for you what those values are. So to showcase this, I think what I want to do is I'm going to make a duplication of this actual layer. Uh, I think this is just a good habit to get into, especially when we're making masks. Um, so what I'm going to do is you'll see on my right hand panel here, I've got my layers. I'm going to take this layer one and I'm just going to duplicate it. Uh, so I'm going to click the duplicate layer button that's down in the bottom right hand corner here. And as you can see, that will create a layer one copy one. Uh, so a duplication of my initial layer. This isn't like a necessary step, but I always like to get into the habit of making duplications, especially uh, when I'm working with files like these. So I can uh, so I can keep both and reference them in my workflow. So I'm going to take this layer one, copy one, and I'm going to navigate to our automated function, which is going to be this luminosity selection to do a luminosity selection of the sky. If I go to select, OK. There's a variety of different select related tools, like I can use pixel targeting, for example, which is probably something I should do another video on soon. But I'm going to use luminosity selection. And like I said, this is going to be like a simple one step process. I'm going to click this and it's going to make my selection for me. So I'm going to click luminosity selection. And what you'll see is that my uh, image will turn red. And you might wonder why that is. And I'll show you that. So. Under select, there's a function called overlay options. By default, you won't have this red selection set up. You'll actually have something called marching ants. Uh, what that means is when you have a selection, 
it's going to make uh, a luminosity selection based on your background in this case, and it's going to show you these march marching ants, uh, which is a uh, method of, of sort of showing you what elements you've selected. So if we're looking at our image here, we've selected everything that's inside this marching ants function. Uh, I'm not a big fan of this selection method uh, because I, I don't think it does a really good job of showcasing the actual elements that we're selecting, um, especially when it comes to more brush related selections. What I like to do is I like to go to select and overlay options. And I actually like to change this to selection highlighted. I think selection highlighted is a, a critical change, a critical non-default change you make in ACDC. Meaning I would really recommend switching over to selection highlighted versus using the default, which is marching ants. It also gives the opportunity, if you have a color blindness, uh, you can uh, adjust the color that you uh, that show, is, sh is showcased um, with the, uh, the uh, opacity color here. But I'm going to keep it as red. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit OK. And so what's going to happen here is it makes a selection of my image. And uh, the areas that are red in my image are um, they are, have varying levels of severity, meaning like we're going to make a selection, but it's going to be based on which areas are really, really bright and which areas are really, really dark. And the way that I can showcase what this is going to do to my image is actually if we inverse the selection, if we take this active selection that we have, aka this red area that's on my, my image here, and if I actually go to select again and I invert the selection, you'll see exactly what we're not selecting. So in the case of our image here, the parts of our image that are actually brightest that are going to be subject to this luminance selection, right, are the skyline itself. And this is going to be pretty common when it comes to your skies, with the exception of maybe night photos. Um, and the reason why is because the sky is bright and our foreground here is darker. Um, so in this case, when I go to invert that selection, uh, that's, that's also true. So I've taken a luminance selection and I've gone, well, okay, select all of the parts of your image that are brighter, aka the skyline here. And then what I've done is I've gone up to select and I've just gone to the inverse function. And what the inverse function is now doing is, oops, um, is it's making a selection of everything that isn't bright in our image. So it's inverting that and it's selecting, in this case, the foreground and a bit of the very off into the outskirts. And so remember when we had that marching ants selection, um, you'll remember that the sort of the marching ants went along this area here and popped up into the sky. And sort of in this case, it showcases, um, you know, a very similar method of looking at these selections. So the reason why I'm showing you this is because we actually haven't made any changes to this image yet. We're only like making a selection of where we want to make changes. Um, but I'm going to stick to selecting the sky and not the foreground. So I'm actually going to go back up to select once again. And I'm going to invert it so that I'm making a selection of, in this case, the sky, as you can see here. OK? The next thing I'm going to do is there's a couple different things that we can do in regards to the sky. I think one of the most essential changes that we do is we actually look at the curves on this image and make a curves adjustment to our layers here. So I'm going to take this luminosity selection and I'm going to take our layer one copy one here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate all the way down to our curves panel, which is just in the adjustment layers here. And what that's going to do is provided that I have an active selection, in this case, again, that active selection is this red area, provided that I have that active selection, it's going to make a mask for me with that information there. So if we look at this mask preview, which is on our curves adjustment, so our curves adjustment being this layer that's on the very top here, OK? Uh, if we actually look at the mask preview, which is right here, you can see, which is so neat, um, that that mask preview is a, uh, a beautiful replication of that selection that we had. And I can showcase you, uh, I can showcase uh, to you uh, the same effect as when we went to invert that mask. And the way I can showcase that to you is by taking our layer here, duplicating it, clicking on the mask itself and actually inverting that mask using the mask properties that's down on the bottom right here. So I'm going to do that. And again, the whole point of this is just to showcase this little mask thumbnail here 
and to show you that that mask thumbnail is exactly the same as when I clicked my layer one copy one here and went to the luminosity selection. So this active selection is identical to this selection of the curves here, this little mask thumbnail. And when I take this selection and I make an inversion of it, this inverted selection is the same as this curves one that I have inverted the mask here. So those re that relationship between this uh, active mask that's on this adjustment and the selected uh, por portion of the luminosity selection on our image is, is fundamentally the same. Um, the beautiful aspect of this, which I'm just going to delete my inversion because we don't need it. Again, we're interacting with the sky, not necessarily the foreground here. But one of the cool things is I can take this curve here and I'm going to uh, make sure to preview it. We want to make sure it's turned on. Turn on. I'm going to take this curve and instead of clicking on the mask thumbnail itself, I'm going to click on the either the little icon here or the curves title itself. And what that does is if you look down in this bottom section above the adjustment layers, it'll open up the actual tool itself. So I click on the mask and it brings up the mask properties. I click on the actual name of the adjustment and it brings up the adjustment properties. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a very simple curves adjustment. And that curves adjustment is I'm going to make it the bottom section of this curve where the blacks and dark, uh, dark sections of our image is. I'm just going to further darken them. So I'm going to lower that curve. We'll just lower it dramatically to begin with, and we'll adjust this as we see fit. So I'm going to take that curve, and then I'm just also going to take the bottom portion of our curve here, and I'm going to raise that curve up. And so what we're looking for is we're essentially taking these uh, shadows and highlights in our image, and we're making the highlights uh, a little bit brighter, and we're taking these shadows and we're making them a little bit darker. And the effect uh, of that is we're actually adding contrast to a specific portion of our image. And that specific portion of our image, once again, is the sky based on the selection. So prior to that, we have our image where uh, we have not made a selection of our sky. And this is what our sky looks like. And then when we actually turn on this curves adjustment, it's being applied to the area that uh, was in our selection. So I'm taking a uh, luminosity selection. I'm using luminosity selection to uh, embolden this sky here. Because when it comes to skies, skies are going to have more luminance. They're going to have more uh, brightness than other parts of our image. So we can essentially hack that. We can make a very quick selection of our sky by using that luminosity selection. Now, the cool thing about this is, um, well, actually, maybe before I show that, I'm just going to adjust the individual color values. So I'm going to go into my curves adjustment, and I'm just going to actually do the exact same. I'm going to lower the red, pull that up. And I think maybe red. And let's see what happens when we interact with each individually. This is kind of cool because I can give it a magenta look by in just adjusting, in this case, uh, the blue and the red, uh, not necessarily interacting with the greens in here, which would change the tint of the whole thing. That looks pretty good. Um, the other thing I'd probably want to do is make a general exposure and contrast adjustment to this image as well. But one of the cool things that while we're talking about luminosity selection, we might as well talk about this. And that is, I can take this curves adjustment. OK, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that curves adjustment. I'm going to make a duplication of it. And uh, that's gaudy. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this mask property. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert that mask property. And I'm going to add a bit of feathering. And we're going to go into the actual adjustment settings on this. And I'm going to go to the master. And let's just tighten this up a little bit. I just want to make that foreground a bit darker, but not in a way that would dramatically affect the rest of our image. So I'm just taking this curves adjustment that we made to our skyline, making inversion of it to also affect that of the rest of our image. A cool thing to check while we're in here, actually, is if I go to over to our color picker, or eyedropper here, which is at the very top of our tool panel here. We click on that. 
we can actually verify that these colors aren't fully black. So if I hover over things like this dark gray here, you can see that the color values that are being illustrated to us are 30, 36, and 30, which means that this is a, a shadow color, but it isn't a true black. Uh, a true black would be uh, either very, very close to 0, 0, 0 values for RGB, uh, or they might be something like, uh, you know, like very, very low, like uh, maybe in the five zone. Uh, but we can see that we still have a fair amount of contrast in our image. Um, and we've improved the skyline in our image here uh, in comparison to our original. We've sort of totally improved the vibrance in this image. One of the things that we can also do is we can take our curves. I'm just going to hide it for now. This is just the foreground, not the background. And what we can do is we can add a exposure adjustment on our image. Uh, and this is going to become very apparent uh, when we have a look at other images. But I can click this exposure adjustment just down to the bottom left here. And generally speaking, uh, one of the things that we're trying to do with skies, right, this sky portion here, is we're trying to slightly reduce the exposure so we're actually making the whole image darker by reducing the exposure. And we're trying to increase the contrast. And one of the effects of this is, um, is you can, um, you're, you're going to get a lot more value out of the clouds by increasing the contrast and lowering the exposure. Because we're making the whole image uh, darker, but we're increasing the contrast, which is going to uh, change the relationship between the whites and now the darker portions of these clouds. The reason why I want to showcase this is we're going to use this more uh, in other images, um, especially when we go into develop mode. Uh, I just want to showcase that this, this sort of function of lowering the exposure, increasing the contrast uh, works really well. But in many ways, I actually kind of prefer some of the effects that you can get with the curves and the luminosity selection. Um, I'm just going to go in and delete some of these anchor points on our other colors here. So we can get a true relationship here. But there's there's some things that I can do to this image with just changing the curves of the sky using the luminosity selection. And then I can also apply something like exposure and then slightly reduce the opacity to create like a nice homage of those two methods, which I think looks really good, uh, you know, especially in comparison to the previous image. And noting too that there wasn't any loss in this image, we haven't underexposed any parts of our image based on these blacks here. Uh, and it looks like we haven't overexposed any parts of our image either. There's no real true whites, although we do get a couple uh, whites that are quite close. Okay, let's move on to the next method and we'll talk more about this sort of uh, combining this method uh, with other methods in a moment here. If I go to manage and discard, um, I'm going to go to another image. And this image has like very little cloud detail. Uh, I'm going to pull this into develop mode. So this image, you're not going to gain, uh, gain a lot of uh, contrast uh, adjustments out of your clouds. Um, so be just because there's not really a lot of detail in the sky here. And it's sort of has a middling saturation, meaning that it's quite gray. Uh, we can play around with that just to showcase what that's going to look like in the general changes if we lower the exposure and increase the contrast. You're going to see like these pop a little bit more on the right hand corner here. But the other thing too is in develop mode, which is the mode we're in now, uh, also all of this foreground area is adjusted. So previously, uh, when we were working in edit mode and we used luminosity selection, it kind of made a selection of the sky based on uh, sort of the luminance value of the sky. But when we just make adjustments in develop mode, uh, like in this case, when we lower the exposure and increase the contrast in our image, uh, these general applications are just that. They're being applied generally to the whole image. So we actually have to use secondary methods of selection in something like develop mode. And uh, one good method of doing that, I'm just going to reset these values using the reset button on the top left or right here of the general tab. A good way of doing that is in the tune panel itself. OK, let's just hide these. We don't need to see these right now. In the tune panel itself, I'm actually going to open up the linear gradient tool. The linear gradient tool 
uh, in the same way that the luminosity selection earlier, when it showcased that red overlay in our image, uh, in contrast to that of the marching ants, the gradient tool is also going to do the same thing. We see this gradient mask. Uh, this gradient mask is illustrated by this yellow area that's represented in the top portion of our image here, which once again, we can actually change that gradient mask to any color, green, blue, you can leave it as red. So we can showcase that that area is actually uh, adjustable too. So when I click on the uh, linear gradient tool, you're going to notice that when I hover actually over the preview, the image itself, that these uh, panels become visible that allow us to change the, in this case, the severity of that change and the relationship of the angle of that, uh, um, the corresponding changes. I can also drop this down so I can see the severity of that and I can see that it's impacting even the skyline and a bit of the our subject here, which probably wouldn't be ideal. So I'm just going to raise it. And we're going to play around with this function. So in uh, the gradient tool itself, once you've actually made a, a linear gradient that you think that would be applicable to your image, then you can go through and you can make some of these changes. Just for the time being, I'm going to hide the show gradient mask so we can see the truth of our adjustments. So we could do something like lowering the exposure, in this case, in our sky, and increasing the contrast once again. And one of the things you'll notice right off the bat um, is it gives our sky a lot more depth because we're showcasing a much deeper, darker blue here than that of the actual sky portion that's underneath here, uh, right next to the, the sort of um, the the uh, horizon line, the the line of uh, these uh, these mountains and such here. So if I really was to take this to the nth result here, I would dramatically change to the extent that that's almost too much. But you can see that we started a very rich deep blue here, and we transition to uh, sort of like a nice uh, white here. And I can also interact with different metrics within this too. Uh, I would maybe want to reduce the clarity on my image slightly here. A note about clarity. So this clarity slider, if we increase it dramatically, you'll notice that uh, your image will sharpen slightly uh, in the area that um, that uh, is highlighted in this case to, to receive the changes. So where this becomes most notable right here is this uh, sort of streaky line that we see on the far right. Uh, if we lower the clarity, what it's going to do is it's going to do a like very marginal blend of that area. Um, and we're going to see the, uh, the the sharpness of those uh, the sort of the changes of that clarity are going to be less severe. Um, one of the things to note about clarity in general is if you're uploading an image to uh, social media, okay, like um, like Instagram, for example. If you're uploading an image to Instagram, you want to really reduce the clarity. And this might sound counterproductive, but actually um, the way that the, an upload algorithm works on something like Instagram is it's going to take uh, really detailed uh, images and they're going to compress that detail in a way that's like doesn't really look good uh, on social media settings. So if you're a photographer and you're like, oh man, whenever I upload my, my images, they always come out somewhat grainy over uh, something like Instagram, for example. Uh, what I would note is if you just take this clarity slider and uh, reduce it as, as much as you can while still maintaining the truth of your image, uh, you're going to see that those images are going to come out like way, way, way crisper, which sounds like a contradiction. But when you actually go through the process of uploading those images, the difference are going to be incredible. So if you see that your uh, images are coming out like kind of granular and noisy, um, just go through the process of adjusting the clarity uh, as a post-processing measure prior to uploading them to, uh, to your social media site. And that compression and lossiness is going to be much less visible in your final product. Uh, so just a note of that, uh, and this is obviously going to come into play hugely when we talk about skies, because there's all this like beautiful detail that we're going to lose in things like clouds when we have uh, a higher clarity uh, cranked in our image. So I'm just going to go through the process of lowering that clarity. And then I'm going to tab over to the color EQ panel right here. And what we could do is we could play around with the brightness of blues. 
I could really lower the brightness on our blues, or I could really raise the brightness on our blues and sort of find a middle ground where we're like really uh, interacting with the, the correct hue that we want in that area. Um, I might need to go back in and just adjust the clarity again to sort of get rid of this line structure that occurs here. Um, reduce that slightly. And I might take in the tone curves and just, just slightly adjust the tone curves. Even something like that is maybe just slightly reduce that too. And I'm just playing around, but if I show the original, you can see that there's way more depth because we're starting from a much richer, deeper blue here. And we're moving very, very gradually using this gradient mat mask towards the center of, our, center of our image, which we can control where this, uh, the effects of this gradient mask end, right? Uh, in this case, the nice thing about that is we're not interacting too much uh, with our subject here. Uh, we're not interacting with the foreground. We can maintain the sort of crispness and the colors uh, and the exposure levels of our foreground while just interacting with, in this case, um, the sky. Um, so Phil asked, uh, when I initially bring up an image, the histograms are very smooth curves. When I make an adjustment to color, light, et cetera, they become very jagged. Uh, why is this? Why don't they stay smooth? This is a really good question. And it's one that I actually asked uh, our QA uh, and our developers recently. And uh, one of the concerns that developers had is that they were worried that uh, people were going to perceive uh, that histogram thing as um, sort of uh, making some What's the word for it? Uh, I guess like aggressive changes to the image that were unintentional. Uh, and Phil, all I would note about this is uh, this has been flagged as an actually uh, a bug and it's current being worked on uh, in the, the current uh, issue of, of ACDC to address this bug and fix it. Fix it. Uh, note that your image isn't actually changing uh, in any way that uh, like from that jaggedness. That jaggedness is literally just a display error, error that's been currently being worked on. Uh, and I've received this question a lot recently uh, from people being like worried that uh, they might be uh, receiving or rather that they might be making lossy adjustments to their image. And note that no, you're, you're not making any more lossy adjustments than you would normally when you're uh, editing an image. So. Um, Please just ignore this and it will be fixed in the next issue of ACDC, Phil. Thank you. Um, so Odvin asked, is it possible to delete parts of the linear gradient? This is a great question. Um, and I think to answer this question, uh, we, can't, we can't take a parts of this uh, linear gradient out. But one of the things we can actually do in develop mode, and we'll talk about this a little bit in more depth uh, later too. But instead of using the linear gradient, I can actually use something like the develop brush instead. And what this will enable us to do is make brush selections versus actually linear gradient selections. So let's just make a note of our changes in terms of our uh, general adjustments and our tone curves. And we'll apply that as a brush setting instead of as a, uh, as a gradient. Um, so I'm just going to make a quick note of this. I think it's minus 66 for exposure uh, 56 and then minus 81. And then we can just do the tone curves ourselves. But I'm going to go to the develop brush. And I'm going to make these exact same changes. So note that we're not now we're not in the linear gradient tool anymore. We're actually in the develop brush. I'm just going to write in minus 66 for exposure. And then for contrast, it was 56. And then for clarity, we wanted negative 81. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this gradient and I'm going to deactivate the linear gradient by clicking on this I. Uh, a note from deactivating something versus refreshing something, or rather, so if I was to reset all these parameters, this would get rid of my gradient. But this little uh, button right to the right of it, this little circular icon here, all this does is quite literally just pauses it. It, it uh, uh, hides that from view. And we know that we can maintain this uh, gradient. Uh, we know that that information is stored. Uh, it's just being hidden from view. Uh, that icon right there indicates that we still have live gradient changes. 
Anyway, long story short, uh, I've made those adjustments to the uh, exposure, the contrast, and the clarity now within the brush tool. And I'm just going to add that slight tone curve adjustment here in addition. And instead of using the linear gradient tool, we're going to show brush strokes in red and just paint on instead. So you can see that this can be applied locationally on your image. This is kind of a cool uh, method too, because you might, as you're editing, you might want to emphasize the space in between clouds, especially if your clouds are more uh, prominent in your image. And this might be a great way of going in and just adding, in this case, um, that uh, that effect to the the following areas in our image. Um, so you can be selective in regards to your uh, your uh, application uh, of this uh, tone curves and uh, and exposure and contrast adjustments. Uh, just note that in this case uh, we're using the brush tool uh, instead of the linear gradient tool. Good question. OK, so now I'm going to show you a completely different method. And I think this method is really cool. I'm going to go to Manage Mode. So um, just as a recap, the two methods that we've looked at is uh, luminosity selection in Edit Mode in relation to really like high color, uh, sorry, uh, to in relation to an image that we really wanted to get more vibrance out of. Uh, and then we uh, did some development changes to this image that had a very little clouds. Uh, and actually what we wanted to do was just make a linear uh, gradient in this part of the sky so we can get a more of a transition from a deep, darker sky to that of a much lighter sky, which gives this image a bit more uh, depth uh, than, and improves the, the overall look of the sky in this case. Uh, I'm going to transition to uh, this image here of my friend's dog. And we're going to open up in edit mode. And we're going to use a completely different method, um, which is this case, we're actually going to use a gradient map. So er earlier, uh, Peter asked, can you use a luminosity mask to reduce haze? You can reduce haze using um, something called dehaze. But I think what you actually might be referring to is uh, a function that is um, is utilized sort of to sort of fill, in, in this case, uh, these areas in and around the clouds. Uh, that's uh, a function that's in uh, other photo editors. Uh, and it's something, too, that, uh, that uh, ACDC doesn't have a ability to I guess you can use the luminosity in regards to um, a, a blend mode. But I'm just going to showcase a different method that I think uh, is, is really cool and works really well on, a, on an image like this that has a lot of um, sort of these like tight, compact clouds with a lot of uh, contrast that's already exists in the image. And we just want to further embolden that contrast. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my layer one. And once again, I'm just going to duplicate that layer. And this time, I'm going to do something I haven't done yet. I'm going to actually add a gradient mask to this image. So I'm going to take my layer one, and I'm going to go all the way down to the adjustment layer gradient map, and I click on that. And by default, you see that the gradient map is kind of funny looking. Uh, this is a method by uh, that. What this does is it adds a color to shadows, and it adds a color to highlights. And uh, there's a, a bunch of really cool things you can do with this. But in relation to skies, we don't actually need to add color. We just need to add uh, black and white. That'll become more clear when I'm doing it in a moment here. I'm just going to take this shadows uh, gradient map section down to the bo bottom here. I'm going to click on that. I'm actually just going to fill it with white. I'm going to select white as a color. And highlights, uh, I'm just going to click on it. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Apparently, if you click on the little arrow, it allows you to select it from the panel. But if you click on the box itself, it allows you to pick your color, which is good. I'll just pick black. So what you're going to want is the kind of the opposite uh, of what you'd expect. It's uh, shadows on, uh, on white here and highlights on black. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this gradient map. And I'm actually going to make a subtraction of it. And I think what we're going to do is lower the opacity on it slightly. Not too much, but just slightly, around 50, 60. So just to give you an idea, this is the gradient map. Uh, or sorry, this is the image prior to the gradient map. 
And this is the image after the gray map. And wisely, you're like, hey, Adam, that looks really uh, bad, especially you know, on the foreground. Uh, it's way too dark. And I agree, which is why we need to use a, either one of our two methods. Uh, we need to take this layer right here, and we need to make a luminosity selection. We're going to take that luminosity section. We're actually going to apply it to our pre-existing gradient map. So I'm going to take layer one, copy one, and we'll just hide our gradient map for now. I'm going to go over to select. I'm going to go to luminosity selection. Luminosity selection will once again make a, a selection of the sky. It's going to make a selection of the elements of our image that have a, uh, a high brightness already. I'm going to take that. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mask my image. So I'm going to go down to the add layer mask. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my layer mask here that, as you can see, uh, is on my image here. And um, uh, I'm going to take this mask thumbnail, and I'm going to copy it. So with my mask thumbnail, all I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, and I'm going to copy that mask thumbnail. And I'm actually going to apply it now to this gradient map. So I'm going to take that gradient map. I'm going to right click on the gradient map itself on the thumbnail, and I'm going to paste as a mask. This is very important that I'm not just pasting it. I'm pasting it as a mask because I want to, I want to apply the mask that we've taken of our background image and now apply it to this adjustment. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to now deselect because we don't need that selection anymore, which will remove that active selection. And if I click on the gradient map, if I uh, unpreview, or rather, if I preview this uh, this adjustment, if I unhide it, you can see that that uh, adjustment is now being only applied to that area of our image that is uh, high in luminosity. Uh, so once again, let's just showcase it without and then with. And one of the major takeaways from this is the subtraction of the shadows and highlights is really pushing a lot of uh, contrast and uh, and beauty into this this top section here. I'm getting a lot more uh, clear um, uh, differentiations between uh, where the sky pulls through and the the clouds, and the clouds themselves. And we can tweak this a lot. In fact, we're going to. Um, I'm probably going to increase the opacity on it, and this image is still quite dark. So there's a couple things that we're going to want to adjust. I think first and foremost, I'm probably going to want to add an exposure adjustment on top of this gradient map. And let's increase the contrast and lower the exposure slightly. And let's also, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a white balance adjustment. And this image is very cool. So I'm going to take this white balance adjustment down at the bottom here, which is just this little sun icon. And I'm just going to warm it. And then we're going to interact with some curves here. I might actually increase the exposure. Let's see. Let's have a look and see how close to white these are. So this is white, so this would be blown out. So we want to lower that. OK, so that's nice. This is even still too much. And then I think what I want to do is I just want to pull more light into this section here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, my gradient map. I'm going to copy the mask once again. And let's actually play around with this exposure and see that we can, I might actually use a curves adjustment on this. I'm going to add a curves adjustment. And we're going to paste this copied uh, thumbnail mask right here, copy and paste. And I might invert it. And the reason why is because I actually want to brighten just the foreground and warm it with probably red and green, to be honest. Oops. Oh my god, I'm getting a wacky. There we go. Warm up slightly. Yeah, we'll talk about dehaze in a second here, Gary. 
Um, Richard asks, all these methods work in both raw and JPEG. Um, that's a complicated question because in develop mode, we can make raw adjustments um, and they're saved. Uh, those raw adjustments are saved in a sidecar file. When you open up a raw image in uh, edit mode, uh, it basically, uh, when you go to save down that, that image at the very end of your process, uh, you're actually saving it as a, a non-raw file type. So in essence, to answer your question though, all of these adjustments can be made to raw images. It just, the output file might change depending on how you're interacting with your image. Um, and I wanna go back. I think I'm, I'm sort of a bit happier with those curves now. It's still a bit dark for my taste, but we're working on it. I might go back into this gradient map and let's just like see what it looks like to interact with the opacity. The main point of this though, is I'm taking this gradient map and I'm uh, applying a subtraction uh, to that gradient, gradient map. The other thing we can do, which is kind of neat, is we can click on the, um, the gradient map right here, uh, the actual uh, thumbnail, which uh, corresponds to the mass properties. And we can interact with this feathering and feathering can really change the relationship of your image in a kind of an interesting way. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be super visible to uh, on your end, but if we have no feathering, um, it's quite grainy. And when I actually increase the feathering, you might see that the uh, definitely the foreground becomes much smoother and isn't uh, having that same uh, subtraction applied. Uh, so I actually like it when we just absolutely just crank the feathering on that. Um, I think that looks uh, a, a little bit better than when we had it at the very bottom. And one of the things where it's most visible is in just these corners here when we can watch the detail pop way better. So that feathering is being, uh, in this case, is not being applied to the edge of the dog here. We're losing a lot of value when we, uh, when we have that feathering set to zero. So we're getting much closer. Um, I'm liking this a lot more. Again, so we'll look at the uh, starting image versus where we're at now. I would still probably need to play around more with the curves uh, to lighten this section, the foreground of our image here, but the sky is, is night and day. There's so much more visual information going on in the sky now. It's so much clearer. And we have like this just wild kind of like really detailed pummeling clouds just by using uh, this gradient map along with the subtraction here. One cool thing you can play with is you can take your gradient map and instead of uh, inputting the highlights as black, uh, you can change the color of this and this will kind of uh, warm or cool your photo correspondingly. I might go into blue and you can see that if we actually input a color value in here uh, versus just uh, keeping it black, we can sort of uh, warm our image or cool our image correspondingly, which is kind of a neat little effect that you can get. Uh, however, I think just for this per portion of this, I'm just going to keep it black. Um, yeah. So the other thing is I maybe want to showcase this uh, same effect um, in another image because I think it comes across quite well. And then I, last thing I maybe will we'll showcase is the, the brush selection tool on an image where we want to uh, really avoid um, really avoid a, uh, actually let's do that now. It might be a nice transition from this. Um, so I'm gonna navigate away from this image. I could play on this for a long time, but the point is, is we've really improved the, the contrast of the sky here. Uh, let's go to our other image here, uh, which is just this, uh, this image of this, um, this uh, legislative building. And uh, we're going to uh, improve the contrast in our skies here. And to do this, we need to bring it into develop mode. We're going to talk about this in develop mode. And um, often what will happen is if I just make a general exposure and a contrast change to our image, as you can see, uh, once again, uh, you know, this is changing our, our, our foreground, our, our building here in ways that we don't like. Uh, right, we don't want to adjust the the building. So what we do want to do is apply this exposure adjustment to just the sky. Uh, and there's some cool things we can do here. Uh, so I'm going to reset these general settings, and instead I'm going to open up the tune and the brush tool. And we'll go to our general settings, and we're going to actually turn on smart brushing to make a uh, brush of the edge of our our, our building here. So I'm going to take our develop brush 
I'm going to turn on uh, smart brushing. I'll just turn on magic. I'll set the tolerance really high. And all I want to do is maybe I'll set it even higher than that, actually. There we go. I'm just going to make a selection around the edge of my building here. So this is just an active selection. Uh, let's make sure I catch all these little strands here. I will now turn off smart brushing. I'll just select the rest of the sky in our image. And we might need to do a little work in here, but we'll do that in a second. Turn that off. And then now with our actual um, smart uh, uh, brushing, we, when we have our, our uh, selection here, what we can do is we can lower the exposure and increase the contrast. And that is just being applied to the sky now versus the building. We're maintaining the contrast of the building. And so I can I actually I can really pump that up and get a really blue sky here. Um, and I can lower the exposure slightly to bring up more of those clouds. And we might lower the clarity slightly again if we were to interact with this image in a social media setting. And I will maybe go into uh, color EQ. And one of the things that we can do too is we can actually increase the contrast of the blue. So in this case, the blue being these the sky portion here, um, if I go in and I can increase the contrast of the blue, um, I can get like a, almost like a, a HDR effect here, which too much of that uh, is a bad thing, but a little bit can really give this image a lot of um, a shape and, and depth here as well. Uh, too much HDR and you get like this crazy, uh, you know, it just feels like it's being, uh, you took like three separate images and combined the, uh, the uh, um, combined the all of the highest uh, uh, quality uh, uh, contrast of each image, uh, which obviously isn't an intentional. It looks a little bit silly, but just if we increase that slightly, you can see how much that uh, that might give our our image a little bit of depth. And all of that is is taking whatever sky color you have, which in this case, if your sky was a little bit closer to a cyan or something like that, or maybe it was a, a purple or a magenta due to it being a, a sunset, you can actually gather uh, or you can add contrast to specific colors. Uh, so wh where I am right now is I'm in color EQ and in color EQ within the develop brush, there's uh, these four panels, uh, saturation, which you can increase the saturations of your blues. Uh, we have brightness, which increases, obviously, the brightness of the blues. We have the uh, hue, which can change, in this case, the blue to a cyan, if we wanted to. Uh, and then lastly, pardon me, we have this contrast panel, which does just what I just described. It actually adds contrast to a specific color. And I think this is really useful, especially in images like this, where we have such, such, such strong differentiations uh, in color from our clouds. And it just gives our, our, our image a real good pop to it. Uh, and again, for reference, our original image, very blown out, uh, very bright. And our new image with a uh, much more vibrant and interesting looking sky here. Um, I'm going to answer some questions here. Um, because that's sort of the main uh, topics of conversation I wanted to touch today. So let's have a look at some of these questions. Gary asked, can you use dehaze effectively when in an image somewhat overcasty, light smog? Yeah, I've got, I wonder if I have a good example of this. Actually, let's go back into our original image here. I'll go back to manage mode. Um, and I'll just showcase what dehaze tool actually does. Dehaze is an interesting tool. It's kind of like a proprietary tool that combines a bunch of different effects. Uh, but if I add a dehaze adjustment to this image, it is making some contrast and exposure adjustments along with a, a subtle light EQ difference. And so we can take a dehaze in an image like this, which if we look at it, has like a, sort of like a, a smoky even look over top of the water here. And when we add it and increase that, you can see that uh, what what is being adjusted in our image. I find dehaze is less useful for skylines and more useful for water. Uh, I will describe what I mean. <clears throat> so I'm going to go into an image 
in my uh, do do in my landscapes folder here. See if I can find it. Um, and uh, oh yeah, it's back one more. There we go. Uh, so if I go into this landscapes folder and I find this image that has a lot of do 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 haziness above water. Oh yeah, this is a really good example. Um, we might use something like dehaze to much more effect in here because it, unlike the sky, when we use dehaze, we're getting a lot of, we're getting like a really lossy kind of like overexposed and like overly vibrant effect. But if we use dehaze with something like an image like this, when really what we're trying to do is even just get a little bit more clarity in and among uh, these trees and branches. If we have a bit of a condensation or like a dewy vibe that's going on in our image, then dehaze is gonna be a really good way of pulling, uh, pulling more uh, contrast into this. I find too that dehaze is gonna be a bit more useful when you have like way, way, way more differentiation in color. Uh, obviously in this image we have trees that are like kind of this gray or brown and then we have the um, you know all of the other areas in our image which are either blue or green but one thing as I would note is I don't really want this section of our image to change so if we're going to use an effect like dehaze I would go in and I would click the actual uh, the mask thumbnail itself and what I would do is I would actually just brush on with a really high feathering I would sort of brush out any element that you wanted to keep the, the sort of original uh, value of, that original perspective, which is in the center of your, your image here. I'd want to maintain that sort of a nice white peering through the, uh, the rest of our image, while perhaps, in this case, dehazing the areas around that image. Uh, of which I would need to play with more, but you see my point. Uh, I think you'll find uh, that the, the methods I talked to you about today, using obviously exposure and contrast along with luminosity selection, uh, the brush or linear gradient tools, uh, or even using something like that subtract method in the gradient map, you're gonna get more value out of something like that than just using a blank dehaze on your sky, if that makes sense. There's gonna be instances where uh, your sky might be like, have a lot of condensation or dewiness to it, just because when you took the photo, there was a bit of particulate in the water, perhaps you were above a stream or something like that when you took the photo. And that might be a good opportunity to try out dehaze. But I think in general, you really want uh, your image to have an appearance of almost a lot of de a humidity in it uh, and a good contrast between uh, a bunch of different colors. Hopefully that answers your question, Gary. That's my, that's, that's my preference, by the way. I, I, don't, I wouldn't say that's a hard rule, but that's my preference. I, uh, should we answer that? Uh, Kenneth asked, can you explain the highlight slider in the general tab? I use it a lot to make clouds pop. The highlight slider in the general tab. So that was back in develop mode, I'm guessing. Um, so if we're to go into another image and we take up an image like this one that has a lot of clouds and we go into that guy. And in general, there's just the highlight function. So we increase the value of that. Let's go into a different image. I don't think that's doing a good job. See if we can pull out any more highlights here. Yeah, that's interesting. Again, I think that's playing a bit too much with the color for my my take. Uh, I would want to use uh, exposure and, and and contrast there, but you can certainly get that same effect. And I would say that um, you know, depending on your the situation uh, with like your clouds and how dark you want the clouds go, this might be like a good method for you as well. I have no no shame on this at all. Uh, I'm just noticing that when I adjust these values, the oranges are changing considerably uh, using the highlights versus, uh, you know, just slightly adjusting something like the exposure. Um, obviously, uh, we can play around with a bunch of different methods. Um, Uh, how much of what I we've seen today can be accomplished without layering? I professional, not ultimate. Yeah, Stan, uh, uh, that's sort of the reason why I wanted to focus in and talk about in develop mode um, uh, using the brush tool. Like we, uh, I'll back up here, uh, find that same folder with my example images. Um, so let's see here. Uh, 
that's why I, I really wanted to focus in and showcase uh, the, the value of the uh, brush and linear gradient tool. Because it, when I was showcasing the luminosity selection, which is edit mode, the thing that you don't have, uh, which a lot of that is an automated way of uh, selecting the sky. Well, my purpose of, of sort of uh, talking uh, about, uh, in this case, the brush tool, and the uh, the linear gradient tool is that that's uh, an effectively a very similar way to get that effect uh, within the develop mode uh, function. And then all we're really uh, using or addressing in this case is we're adjusting the exposure, uh, a contrast. Maybe we're adjusting the clarity depending on the image. And then we could also be adjusting the tone curves. And in the case of this image specifically, we also interacted with the contrast tool uh, on the blue slider. Um, so again, uh, uh, just utilizing the develop brush or the linear gradient brush will allow you to select just the sky while maintaining the contrast and the existing sort of uh, light qualities of the rest of your image. Um, so to answer your question, uh, pretty much everything we've talked about uh, can be uh, can be done within develop mode. I just wanted to showcase the luminosity selection in edit mode because it's a cool tool that not a lot of people know about. Um, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Um, yeah, so uh, Peter asked earlier, can you use a luminosity mask to reduce haze? So if we're to take our image here, uh, let's say duplicate it, luminosity. Um, how would we do that? We could also take, uh, oh yeah, we can make a, a new blank layer and we can make a, let's add like a really dark blue, for example, maybe even darker than that. Uh, there. And we were just to say add a luminosity adjustment to this layer. Oops. And lower the. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really see a way, uh, Peter, of using the luminosity mask to reduce the haze in the image. Uh, or specifically in this case, losing a luminosity as a uh, blend mode. Uh, maybe clarify what you mean, uh, and I can give it a shot live. Um, uh, Rosemary asked, where can I find a tutorial on a col collage of photos? Uh, we, don't have a, we don't have a tutorial for making a collage. Um, uh, Rosemary, ACDC can make a collage, but it's, there's no automated function of, of making a collage in ACDC to my knowledge. Um, I know you can make like automated functions in manage mode are, for example, you can go and create like a slideshow or you can create like a, uh, you know, a variety of different, uh, uh, you know, files using this. Um, but a, a collage in and of itself is not an automated function in ACDC. You'd have to, uh, you'd have to make a, uh, a canvas uh, and, and expand the canvas to contain a variety of different images. Uh, it's a little bit more uh, in depth than uh, maybe the answer you're looking for. Um, maybe send me an email and I can answer more of your questions over an email, Rosemary, which by the way, I haven't linked in a long time. So I should do that now. There we go. Um, Uh, so Bjorn asked, how do you decide to use either develop or edit mode? Um, so Bjorn, I just wanted to showcase how you can get these effects in both modes today. Um, you know, that question I've talked about in depth uh, in a variety of different videos. Uh, to answer your question, um, it depends on, it sort of depends on what your workflow is. And it also depends on uh, obviously which edition of ACDC you have. And it also depends on maybe whether or not you're interacting with a raw file or not. One of the main benefits of using develop mode is that you get to uh, basically edit non-destructively because all of the information, all the changes that you make are saved in something called a sidecar file. And in edit mode, when you edit a raw file in quotation marks in edit mode, you're not actually editing the raw file uh, or not interacting with any of these sidecar files. You're actually just going to have to save down as a new file. And that file is going to be either a JPEG, a PNG, or a TIFF, or something like that. Uh, the benefit of edit mode is that it has a whole layer system. So you get to interact with layers, uh, which is a bit different than develop mode. Uh, yeah. Um, Benjamin, could you run through how to apply luminosity selection to a specific layer? Oh, yes, we talked about that. Um, Miguel, great workshop. Thank you. May I suggest another one focused on portraits and skin treatment? Yes, you can, and I'll write that down. 
Um, thank you for the suggestion, Miguel. Uh, portraits, skin treatment. Specifically in skin treatment, Miguel, um, are you looking to see like uh, blemishing, removing blemishing, or like what, how would you, what are you looking for in regards to that, um, that, uh, that um, workshop? Do you want to see something that's more in relation to like more soft adjustments or I just want to get a feel for what you're looking for in terms of skin treatment. I understand in regards to portraits, that's one thing. Oh, okay. Summarize the use of luminosity selection. Certainly. Okay. In edit mode, the benefit of luminosity selection is when I go to select and luminosity selection, it makes an automated selection of the sky in my image. And the reason why it does that is because the sky has a higher luminance than other parts of our image. When we have this active selection, what we can do is we can make changes to our image. In the previous uh, example, I clicked on the curves adjustment with an, active, uh, um, with an active selection so that I can interact with uh, that particular part of my image. Um, as you can see here, looking at the thumbnail, uh, you can see that uh, all of these curves adjustments are being applied to the white and gray areas of this thumbnail, aka the sky. So luminosity selections are a great way of sort of quickly and effectively selecting the sky so you can make a variety of different adjustments to them, uh, whether it be the curves that I just did, or what I could do is I could apply a uh, exposure adjustment and I could very quickly even reduce the exposure and increase the contrast so I could make a quick change to my sky. Uh, that's quickly summarizing luminosity selection, an automated method of selecting bright parts of our image. Uh, Miguel, beauty uh, treatment, if that's what I'm asking. Okay, yeah, beauty treatment. So we'll talk about uh, doing, doing that. Thank you. Uh, Norm asked, Google uploads photos on my phone. And then I, uh, they asked me if I wanted to make a book using all the photos of a particular person that I shot over many years. Great facial recognition. Can ACDC do facial recognition? Yeah, it does. Uh, it does do facial recognition. I will manage, go to manage mode. I'm going to navigate to a folder that contains some people's faces. Uh, this one right here, people on faces. Uh, we have a folder for face detection here. How face detection works really quickly, which doesn't pertain to the workshop, but might as well answer it is uh, you would basically uh, have your, your images. Uh, and if you wanted to add face, facial information, you would navigate to view mode. And in view mode, uh, you'll see that you can turn on this bounding box that contains this person's name, uh, which is uh, show face outlines down at the bottom here. And then the ability to actually change the person's name is the face tool here. So what I can do is let's see if there's any images that don't already have names. Yeah, so if I basically with facial recognition on, uh, if I turn it off, if I turn it on, you can see that this pops up and it indicates to me that uh, I this is a person's face, right? ACDC recognizes that. And then if I go to face tool, uh, it enables me to add a person's name to this, this face. So I could call her Andrea and hit okay. And then if I look at other images, uh, you know, uh, for example, the next one that looks like it's the same person here, it's going to automatically assign that name. You might also get instances where uh, it'll ask you to either check or uncheck that name, meaning like, hey, is this Andrea? ACDC is trying to figure it out. And whenever you uh, check something, it adds more information to the uh, system's database and the ability to better uh, find people's names. So, uh, and how that pertains to searching for something. So now if I have uh, Andrea and I, I've, I've added her to my database, when I go to manage mode and say, if I was even just simply to search for her name, Andrea, uh, and I would, you can see that the search results here uh, contain those images with that face data in addition to a variety of shoots uh, where I have uh, files with, that are named, uh, have an Andrea name to them. So as you can see here, I, I can search for somebody's name after the name has been applied. Um, the other thing I can do is I can actually categorize, I can search for people's names based using the catalog function. So if I navigate away and I just navigate to my pictures folder, for example, and I'll change the to thumbnails view. Uh, if I go to catalog, and once I have people's names established, if I go to the people section and I actually click on Andrea here, you can see that all of the face data names only 
uh, we're cataloging and now we're, we're navigating to just the files where uh, that I have added, uh, her name is Andrea. Uh, even though, sorry for the confusion, I've titled this file these files Emma, but that gives you the idea. Uh, that feature is pre uh, prevalent in now all editions of ACDC, so uh, home, professional, and ultimate. Uh, so many features, there you go. <laughs> Um, cool. Uh, thank you for the question, Norm. Uh, it's a good one. Uh, all right. Okay, well, that's pretty much all I had to cover today. I'll just do one more recap before I close out, just so everybody can see. Um, let's go back to that workshop folder, and I'll just show one more time a fast workflow. So I have my last image here. I'm going to go into edit mode here on this image. Uh, I have this uh, sort of this uh, nice image, but the sky in this case lacks a lot of contrast. So what I could do is I could take this image, um, I could make a luminosity selection of the sky in this image, uh, and I could sort of apply something like an exposure adjustment. Uh, and then as you can see, I can start to pull through, uh, you know, the sky using exposure and contrast. Uh, I can also take my image here, uh, I can uh, take my image and I can go to something like uh, gradient map. I can apply that gradient map idea to my image, subtract, lower the opacity, and I'm already getting a lot more out of that sky than I was before. And then I could take this gradient map along with that luminosity selection. So I can make a luminosity selection. Let's add a mask. I can take that mask, copy it, paste it to the gradient map. And then now that uh, effect is mostly being applied to the sky here. So we can increase the opacity. I could take this, I can adjust the feathering. So now it's very clearly only being adjusted to the sky. I could take something like, uh, I could actually add an exposure adjustment on top of that where I add a bit more clarity and reduce the exposure even more. So now we're seeing even more of the sun come through. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different ver varieties, diff different things we can use in this. The point is, is that I can use uh, the linear gradient tool in develop mode to sort of make those contrast and uh, exposure adjustments, or I can use something like the uh, luminosity selection within edit mode to select the sky. Yeah. Anyway, that's all I had to talk about today. Thanks so much, everybody. If you have any questions uh, that I wasn't able to get to in this uh, this workshop, shoot me an email. I'm always around to, to answer any questions people have. Um, and then, as always, uh, the next uh, uh, sorry, this workshop will be uploaded probably in about two days to YouTube. And then, uh, Norm, the next workshop will be next month. Uh, when that is, I actually don't. I, ha I haven't had a chance to update the. Um, the uh the pardon me the i haven't had a chance to update the um the actual page the workshop page on the website yet so i will update that soon um yeah if you have any su suggestions for the next workshop norm please uh, shoot me an email um marvin you're most welcome terry you're most welcome as well adrian thank you awesome i'm glad you enjoyed it Kevin, thanks again for all this info. Adam. Great stuff. Need to look at the recording again. Yeah, well, I'll definitely upload it soon. So no worries there. Thank you, Jean-Pierre. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, David. Thank you, Gara. Thank you, Martin. Awesome. I'm glad you learned something new. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, I always appreciate that too, because I, I feel like I try to incorporate uh, some elements that are... Uh, I try to incorporate new and old elements every time I do it, you know, in the sense that I've got a couple new things to add, but I try to reiterate a lot of these old strategies, especially when it comes to things like layers where people need to hear that information multiple times. So yeah, awesome. I'm glad you enjoyed it as well, Norm. Uh, thank you, Bodo. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Martin. Uh, thank you, Alexander. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Lung Song. Thank you, Paulo. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to link my uh, my email again and my U and the YouTube, so you can see that. Um, and uh, I am just going to mute my mic. I'll leave the uh, the workshop open for probably a couple minutes, and then I'm going to close it just so you can get my email if you need it. Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your Tuesday, 
and I'll talk to you uh, in a little less than a month for another workshop. Thank you.